This program is aired to meet the needs of information in a plural society. The opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily endorsed by this station. The following program brought to you in conjunction with Action 4 News and the University of Texas Pan American. And good evening, everyone. I'm Romeo Cantu from Action 4 News, and welcome to this political forum. Two races are on the November ballot as a special election. One of them is a District 15 congressional race. This is a race to watch. Tonight, we have invited the candidates so you can meet them hear their issues, and vote smart. Tonight, this political forum is brought to you by the National Hispanic Professional Organization, the Student Union of UTPA, and of course, Action 4 News. Let's get to the candidates. Let me introduce them to you. They are Paul Herring, the former state representative from Goliad, Eddie Zamora, salesman and minister from ELSA, and of course, the incumbent representative, Ruben Hinojosa of Mercedes, who have served Congress for 10 years. Let me go over the rules now. Each candidate has agreed to the following guidelines. There will be two minutes for opening statements. Each candidate will be asked the same question and will be given 90 seconds to answer. We will be strict on time. I ask you to stop, don't take it personal. You just, we're trying to get through these guidelines and get to quickly to as many of the issues as we can get to. Tonight's questions came from our audience, the students of UTPA and the Action 4 News Lessons Line. If a candidate wants to respond or rebuttal, a candidate's answer, you may do so, but you only have 30 seconds to do so. Now, to make things exciting, the candidates will also have an opportunity to ask each other a question. And I will tell you that when that comes to there. All right, Mr. Herring, you won the drawing. So let's begin with your opening statements. And once you are done, we will go to the next candidate, which will be Mr. Zamora, followed by Mr. Hinojosa. Mr. Herring. Well, I'm very happy to be with you tonight. Uh, my number is Paul B. Herring. Uh, Soy de Goliad, Texas, from Puebla, Pequeño, about 200 miles north of here. Uh, I live in Goliad, a native of Goliad. I'm a former teacher for three and a half years. I was elected to serve in the state legislature for three terms for five, representing five South Texas counties. I'm, gra I'm a graduate of the University of St. Thomas in Houston and the University of Texas Law School. I'm primarily running because I believe in respecting and defending human life. And that's the biggest problem I have with Mr. Ruben Enihosa. He does not defend human life. I, the Victoria Advocate, a regional paper, has this headline, Race for U.S. District 15 about life and death. And the quote Mr. Hinojosa is saying that his right of the mother and not the government to choose to abort or not to abort a child. The Supreme Court has upheld Roe v. Wade, they're quoting Mr. Hinojosa, I don't, and Mr. Iniosa says, I don't support abortion, but I vote to uphold the Supreme Court decision and the right of women to have an abortion to choose. Now, how can you uphold Roe v. Wade, which allows abortion on demand up to the moment of birth, vote, 90, vote approximately 88% for abortion in the Congress, and then tell people you don't support abortion? Complete contradiction. And I think you need to explain that, Mr. Hinojosa. Mr. Herring, we go on to Mr. Zamora. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Thank you for the National Hispanic uh, Professional or Organization and UT Pan Am. I'm Eddie Zamora. I'm running for United States House of Representatives for Texas District 15. I live in Ed Couch, Texas. I'm also an ordained minister in full fellowship with Abundant Grace Community Church right here in Edinburgh, Texas. And I'm very pro-life, pro-family, pro-marriage, one man, one woman. I'm for lower taxes because we the people know how to spend our own money better than the government. I strongly support the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. I support our troops and our veterans. There's many good reasons for you to go and vote in this election. Number one, it's our privilege, it's our responsibility, yea, it's even our civic duty. But let me give you three more good reasons to vote in this election. Number one, you know how Congressman Hinojosa has voted and you agree with him. In that case, I encourage you, please vote for the incumbent. That's what you're supposed to do. Number two, you know how he's voted and you don't like how he's been voting. Vote for Eddie Samora. And number three, you don't know how he's been voting, but you're just now hearing about it and finding out how he's voted. Vote for Eddie Samora because it's your representative's responsibility to keep you informed about what he's doing and how he's voting. How else could he possibly represent you in Washington? 
I think you're going to be surprised when you hear how he's been voting in Washington in this debate. Please keep an open mind and open heart, and I ask for your vote this November. Thank you. Congressman? I am Hironi Nohosa, and I'm honored to have been given the opportunity to stand up for the values and the interests of South Texans. My job as congressman is to take care of the American people and to bring federal resources and funding to our communities. I have done my best to take good care of this region, our state of Texas, and our country as your congressman for the past 10 years. Together, we have reduced our unemployment rate from 22% to 6.5%. We have opened many small businesses. We have improved our roads and infrastructure. We have better educational opportunities, and we are more prosperous now than 10 years ago. But in the end, what, stand, what we stand for, the values we share, and the things we fight for will build a future that we will all enjoy. When I'm elected for my sixth term, I will work hard to create good paying jobs by increasing federal investment in human capital and infrastructure. We will continue to improve highways and job training programs to produce a trained workforce. Although I oppose the president and I did not vote for the resolution to go to war with Iraq, I will continue to support our troops and call for a plan to win the war and gradually bring our troops home. Furthermore, I am for comprehensive immigration reform and against the building of that proposed wall. So on November the 7th and during early voting, I respectfully ask for your vote, your support, and a partnership with the goals of making South Texas a safe and prosperous place to live. Thank you. All right. Well, let's begin tonight with the first question. Mr. Herring, again, you won the drawing, so we're going to begin with you for the first question. Here we go. It's immigration reform. There are two different bills out there. What is your pledge to get a bill passed? And tell us your stance on the guest worker program. Well, I am for uh, some type of guest worker program. I'm for immigration. Immigration is necessary for the United States. Because of abortion and uh, other reasons, we don't have enough young people. We have to have immigration or we'll become a second-rate nation. So I believe in fairness to the immigrants. And I believe in securing our border. And I think they're both are compatible. Samora? Illegal immigration has nothing to do with immigration, has everything to do with illegal. Okay, number one, we need to secure our borders. Anything and everything we can do to secure our borders, I'm for. Whether it's real wall, real fence, or virtual wall, virtual fence, or a combination thereof, I'm for. Also, cutting edge electronics, sensors, drones, uh, cameras. The company I work for is employing cameras along the border to help monitor activity and movement. Flying helicopters, many more boots on the ground. Also enforcing the laws that we have on the books against employers uh, illegally hiring illegals. As far as the guest worker program, that's one solution. I'm not all 100% for that. Another option I think we should right, do. thanks for that. We're considering that as rebuttal. So now we're going to go on to Congressman Hinojosa mm -hmm. for a rebuttal there, if you wish, for 30 seconds. How Republicans want to build a fence instead of really solving our immigration problem? I believe we need comprehensive immigration reform that will stop the incentive people have to come to this country illegally. I do not support building a wall or a fence. We have increased funding to small amounts for enforcement and border patrol agents, although not to the level the 9-11 Commission suggested, and I have voted yes and supported these these uh, increases. All right, thank you. Next question, we will go to Mr. Eddie Zamora. And again, just do I get a rebuttal to that, or was, was mine just a 30 second rebuttal? That was, yeah, that was your rebuttal because okay. the question was for Mr. Herring. So we will move on now to you. Question for you. And after that, if you, either of you have a rebuttal, again, you will have 30 seconds to do that after the question is posed now to Mr. Zamora. Your question Ronald Reagan passed an amnesty bill about 20 years ago, and millions of illegals came into the country. Are you in favor of amnesty? If so, why? I'm not in favor of am amnesty. I think anybody who uh, breaks our laws uh, needs to be held responsible. If you break the law, you're held responsible. Guarantee it. So anybody who's here illegally uh, should go back. We should tell them, if you leave voluntarily, we won't hold it against you. We'll let you get back on the waiting list to come back in this country. Uh, if you don't leave voluntarily and we catch you, we should deport you, and you'll never be allowed in this country again. That's how I would handle that. Now, 
it's not a one shoe fits all uh, solution because there are some people who have been here for 15, 20 years and who have kids who've gone from first grade through 12th grade. So maybe we can have some kind of exception for that. I'm not, you know, but to add to uh, what I was saying before the other question, rather than guest worker program, we need to re-examine the quotas because my understanding is the quota system has been set up 80 years ago in the 1920s and 1930s, back when there was a lot of small Soviet bloc countries where we needed to have blocks set aside for people who might need political asylum. Well, we don't have that anymore because Ronald Reagan won the Cold War without firing a shot. So now we should re-examine the quotas in light of the current needs of we the people. If we need more people to come in from the South legally, let's reapportion the quotas so we can have them here legally rather than the guest worker program because I think the guest worker program is the federal government sanctioning a perpetual lower class of people. All right, rebuttal from either of you two gentlemen. Mr. Hossa, would you like to rebuttal that? My position on this question, which is, am I in favor of amnesty, is that we take a look at the two bills that were proposed in the House of Representatives by Sensenbrenner and the one in the Senate proposed by Kennedy, McCain, and others. And you will find that there is sense a good common sense in the Senate proposal because those who have been here for more than five years have paid their taxes and have not broken any laws should be able to get on a path that eventually will lead to American to citizenship. Mr. Herring. I, I think it's madness to talk about sending 11 million people back to their home countries. Uh, I believe that the people who are here who are not documented should have a right to apply under the normal immigration procedures to become citizens. I am totally against the wall, and I believe we should, have an, we should be welcoming to all people and try to help people in their difficulties and realize that many of them are not here because they want to be here. They're here because they're desperate. I believe we should have economic small grants to uh, Mexico and other countries to help them build up their businesses where they can stay home if they wish to stay home. All right, thank you very much. The next question will go. Representative Hinojosa, this is the question for you. You will have two minutes to answer to this. Recently, a Mexican national was found hidden in an engine, others in duffel bags and even under a bus. One illegal we spoke to says they know the routine of the Border Patrol agents, so they know how to get around the system. What is your plan to secure the border, and why do you think it will work? If you take a look at some of the proposals and studies that have been made, they tell us that what we have failed to do is to fund appropriately the appropriations bills that provide twice or three times the number of U.S. Border Patrolmen that we need and take a look at what and how poorly we have done in protecting the Canadian U.S. border, which has even fewer Border Patrolmen and U.S. Customs people to protect our borders. So there is a lack of willpower there is a lack of, of commitment by those in the leadership. And take a look at who is controlling the House of Representatives, the US Senate, and the presidency. And you will see who is responsible for not allowing that we fund them appropriately. Mr. Herring, do you have a rebuttal for this? Uh, I think uh, we should make it easier for people in Mexico to obtain visas to come here legally. And uh, they shouldn't have to travel all the way from Veracruz to Juarez, over a thousand miles, to uh, be interviewed by an immigration official. I think we should employ uh, bilingual people, uh, people from South Texas, to uh, work with the government to process these visas. And that the only people who want to come here illegally it would be criminals. And we, the border control can uh, do the job if they, we eliminate 90 percent of the good people who are crossing illegally. Okay. There's more. Uh, Mr. Hinojosa, you say that uh, the leadership in Washington is dropping the ball, yet you're for the comprehensive immigration reform plan that's proposed by President Bush. And Mr. Herring, you say that uh, we should let uh, people come here because they're coming here out of need. Well, there's plenty of people in this country, in the world, that would love to come here, but that doesn't mean we throw open the borders for everybody to come here. Mr. Hinojosa, you have voted against border security measures many times in the last three or four years. All right, Mr. Zamora, thank you. This next question, we'll begin with you, Mr. Herring. This question comes from Aloy Gonzalez II in our audience. He used to work at the World Trade Center in New York. Mr. Gonzalez says, according to a recent poll, some Americans want Congress to dig deeper into the 9-11 attacks. Would you be in favor of opening up a new investigation or forming another 9-11 commission 
since new bones have been found? If so, what steps would you take to set it up? Well, uh, I'm not sure we need a new investigation. I think they should uh, put a uh, temporary halt at least on the construction of a building there since they found new bones very recently. I don't think they should build anything until they exhausted every opportunity to find the remains of those victims. Mr. Zamora? The bottom line for 9-11, as far as I'm concerned, the FBI knew what they knew, the CIA knew what they knew, the NSA knew what they knew, all of the investigative agencies knew what they knew, but they were prevented from sharing information because of walls of separation that had been erected and stiffened in the previous administration. The very first thing we did in this administration after 9-11 was tear down those walls, and within 24 hours we knew who they were, where they came from, who trained them, uh, how they were financed. So we need to not have any walls of separation between uh, intelligence agencies. As a nation, it is vital to protect America's security from threats at home and abroad. Democrats are working to make sure that the federal government does more to support our police officers, our firefighters, emergency medical personnel by providing training and equipment needed to keep America safe and secure. We must also work for tighter security at airports, seaports, rail tunnels, and all those types of targets vulnerable to terrorists taking a comprehensive, unified approach in protecting our nation. Okay, thank you very much. Next question, we will go to Mr. Eddie Samora. The war in Iraq, more than 22 Valley servicemen have been killed. Will you keep our troops there or withdraw them? And what about setting a timeline? I will support our Commander-in-Chief and our troops who, and supporting the generals on the ground. I think that as the Iraqi people, the Iraqi military stands up, we should be able to stand down. I expect that to happen more and more over the next 12 months. Now, bear in mind, you haven't heard this on any of the news, but every military engagement that the U.S. has initiated in Iraq, we have won. We've won every battle that we have initiated. Okay? The terrorists know that they cannot defeat us militarily. Therefore, they try to defeat us in the arena of public opinion. And they're very effective in, with that. That's why they don't wear uniforms. They intermix and mingle with civilians. They masquerade as uh, ambulance drivers, you know, healthcare workers, all so that they can terrorize. That's what they're doing. They hate us, whether we're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, they don't care. If you're an American, they want you and your family dead. We have to win this global war on terror in every theater of operation, including Afghanistan, including Iraq, and anywhere else in the globe that the president deems necessary for us to go. Representative Hinojosa. In my opinion, everything that we have learned after we started the war is that there is no strategy to win this war. There is no strategy to bring our troops back. And I say to you that we have been listening to our constituents and the American public, over 70%, say that they are fed up with, with this poor planning and that they are ready to have Congress move quickly and bring back our troops as soon as possible. Mr. Herron. Uh, Mr. Hinos, I think you should have listened to the President's news conference today. Uh, he does have a plan. He wants to win the war and come back immediately. Uh, I think it was a big mistake going to war in Iraq. I was opposed to it. But it would also be a big mistake now to leave, to turn the country over to terrorists. We need to get out immediately after we finish the job properly. Let me ask you a follow-up question to all of this. We'll begin with Mr. Hinojosa to ask this follow-up question on the same subject. I didn't hear either one of you say a timeline. Do you have a timeline on when you think we should be out of this? If you look back at what the president said just 60 days ago, insisting that we stay the course and that he, as long as he was president, he would never bring the troops back until he finished the mission. Look at what he is saying today, that he is no longer going to say stay in the course because he realizes that there needs to be changes in the strategy. You can tell that he realizes that he's made some serious mistakes, both he and the administration. Mr. Harry, in a timeline? Uh, it's too bad you didn't listen to the president today. He had a very strong statement. Uh, setting an artificial date is a 
menu for defeat. We cannot tell the enemy we're going to leave on a certain date. Uh, no one knows when. Uh, General Casey thinks within 12 to 18 months the Iraqi forces will be able to secure their own country. And we, are, we will leave as soon as that is possible. And I think we should support our president, and we don't want to cut and run. That's what the, many of the Democrats want, to cut and run, be defeated, let the enemy defeat us through the media, and run away and defeat. We don't want to do that. We've lost many of our men, and we should not sacrifice their lives in vain. They are working tirelessly to defend our country, and it's necessary that we defeat the, the enemy and that terrorists do not take over such an oil-rich country. Somewhere. It is necessary that we continue this war on terror until we win, until we defeat the enemy. I would rather be fighting the terrorists over there rather than over here. We've had zero attacks against this country on our soil since 9-11. Thank you, President Bush. Thank you, John Ashcroft. The administration is doing, are doing good things for this global war on terror to protect the American people in addition to all of the uh, Patriot Act initiatives that they've done to prevent some planned attacks against us that have been publicized. They wanted to attack our subway systems in New York City. We prevented that. You say that you're for the troops, Congressman, but just four months ago, in a bill entitled declaring that the United States shall prevail in this global war on terror, including Iraq, you voted no. Now, even if you think philosophically we can't win this war, what kind of a message does that send to our troops on the front line? I'll let you, if anyone has a rebuttal to that, what he just said. I would like to uh, okay. say that my opponent fails to read all that he should be reading, and that is that the President and Secretary Rumsfeld have misled America. They've done that. Look at why I voted against the President's resolution. I said he had not gotten the allies that we needed to go to war. He has not come up with a strategic plan on how to exit once we won the war. He had no budget. All of the things that we told him, he failed to do. And so those are all coming up now, and we have spent over $350 billion. Thank you for that. Mr. Herring, do you have a rebuttal? Well, I think you're uh, putting the blame on the, on the wrong person. The president is doing an excellent job. He's definitely telling the truth to the people. If you would listen to him today, I think you would uh, agree with him. Uh, he's, he went to the people through this press conference, and he told them the truth. And the truth is uh, we're in a difficult struggle to save our nation, and we have to keep fighting to make sure that we will remain a free nation. Okay. Next question. Let's move on to health care. We'll begin with Mr. Hinojosa. When it comes to health care, many here in the Rio Grande Valley do not have health insurance or either are underinsured. What will you do in Washington to help solve this problem for Valley families? Access to quality, affordable health care is critical to the well-being of America today and in the future. I see it right here in the Rio Grande Valley. Central to this is addressing the needs of the 45 million uninsured Americans, strengthening the Medicare system through a fair and meaningful prescription drug benefit and giving patients the clout to challenge the decisions of health insurers. What we have found is that those in control right now are willing to take up Medicare at 1 o'clock in the morning while the whole country is asleep. And they arrange that Medicare take care of the pharmaceutical industry, not the senior citizen. Take a look at how they took out the amendments that would have allowed, have allowed us to bring in pres uh, prescription medication from Canada and from Mexico and other countries where it costs one third of what it cost us here in the United States. Take a look at what they have done to blind America by passing that legislation when they held the vote open for over three hours till they twisted arms and forced them to vote in favor of their legislation. I say to you, take a look at what this country is so fed up with those in the leadership who have control of the three houses and that it is no longer as safe as they claim that it is. Mr. Herring, rebuttal, 30 seconds. I believe all persons have a natural right for health care, good housing, and good education, and I support all of them. 
I think we should have uh, uh, health care coverage, excellent benefits, and affordable for all persons. I think the AARP is working on a good plan to, to involve individuals, businesses, and the government. And I think they're on the right path. We don't want a new bureaucracy to, to uh, create many problems for people. We want something that will work and be affordable. Mr. Zamora, 30 seconds. Fully fund Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, and bring lawsuit reform from Washington to complement what we've done out of Austin. The best health insurance in the world is useless if we don't have highly qualified health care professionals willing to serve here in the Rio Grande Valley. Just six months ago, a lady whose family's from my home area, Ed Couch Elsa, was taken to the hospital. She had good health insurance. There was no qualified neurosurgeon on duty at the time. She needed an emergency brain surgery. So they airlifted her to Corpus Christi. By the time she got there, she was dead. The best health care insurance in the world is useless if we don't have highly qualified health care professionals willing to be here in the Rio Grande Valley. All right, let's stick still with health care. I've met a lot of veterans here in the Valley, and as I'm sure you all have. All of them wanting a veterans hospital that is too far for them to go all the way to San Antonio or Houston for treatment. We're going to begin again with Mr. Herring. How do you feel about having a veterans hospital here in the Valley, and would you do that in Washington or bring one? What would you do? Yes, I think you should. I'd be in favor of it. And I'd also be in favor of a state medical school that the two will work together. So I think that would be a good combination. You have uh, many good doctors here, but you need many more. So I favor uh, building a, a, a BA hospital and also in conjunction with the state to have a medical school. Uh, I'm going to, if I were elected, I'm going to Washington as, as a friend of President Bush. Mr. Inihosa sent $25,000 up in the last election to defeat President Bush sent to John Kerry headquarters. Now, that's not helping the district. That's, that's hurting it. He's, he's lessening his possibilities of getting help from the administration by constantly bad-mouthing them and sending 25000 up to do them in. Samora. I'm going to propose that any combat veteran that lives more than 150 miles away from a VA, VA hospital gets a free health care access card good at any hospital in the country. Then Washington has a choice, either give us the card or build us the hospital. I believe that it's shameful that the federal government has not provided a veterans hospital here in this region, which if you just count the eight counties around Hidalgo County, you will find that there's over 55,000 veterans. And when you add those winter visitors who also come and stay in northern Mexico and, and cross to get their health care, you'll see why it is so important that we get a veterans hospital, and I will support that. But I'll tell you what, there isn't the mind, the mind and the political will to appropriate the money necessary to do that. All right. Sticking here with the Valley, let's talk about the Valley economy. What are your plans? We will begin with Mr. Zamora. What are your plans to strengthen our local economy? How will foreign trade play into your economic plans, do you think? Foreign trade is very important to our economy here in the Rio Grande Valley. You're talking about just here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we rely heavily on people coming across legally every day of the week to shop and do commerce here. That's a big part of our economy. Uh, I don't think uh, building walls or fences would hinder that at all because people who come here legally are going to continue to come here legally. Uh, what I can do from Congress is to help that we have funds that come from Washington to help improve our roads, our bridges, which will help improve uh, travel infrastructure and that in turn helps the, the economy as well. Also. We need to improve our levees here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, I've heard estimates that they need to go up as high as six feet in some areas. We also need to coordinate with the Mexican government so that they can do uh, their part on the other side of the river as well. Because if we upgrade our levees and they do nothing on the south side, then we'll be safe. But Reynosa, Progreso will flood, and they're our neighbors, and we rely on them heavily for commerce. And just, it's just the, the better thing to do to make sure that we're looking out for both sides uh, rather than paying billions of dollars in humanitarian aid later after a Cat 5 hurricane. Hosa. If you take a look at the polls this week, you'll see that Americans now realize that the Democrats can do a better job on the economy. They are now almost $8.5 trillion in national debt and are paying $113 billion a year in interest to foreign debt holders like China, Russia, and Japan. More then we spend on Homeland Security, veterans, health care, and student loans combined. We need a big change in Washington and try to improve the economy with the Democrats. Mr. Harris. Well, I think we should keep it 
uh, simple for people to, from Mexico to come here to trade. Uh, this area is very dependent on that trade, and I will certainly work for that. Another thing, in the long run, to have a good economy, we have to have young people. We have to stop the annual slaughter of over 1.3 million human beings per year. 50 million since Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade, which the congressman has supports, and he has not answered my question why he supports that and still says he's against abortion. All right, sticking here with foreign trade, we will begin, of course, with Mr. Nervosa. Tell me what you think about your stance on either CAFTA or NAFTA. I believe that CAFTA, which was passed about 13 years ago, has had winners and losers. And we in this area have been winners because our agriculture exports have gone from 20 billion to over $50 billion. We see that we are exporting a lot of information technology, software programs, and lots of different products and services that are helping our great state of Texas. That has been one of the factors that have helped reduce the unemployment rate from 22% down to 6.5% in our region. I say that those trade agreements that I have supported, such as uh, CAFTA, are going to prove to be very helpful in helping Central American countries that are part of this uh, trade agreement and that we will be able to increase all sorts of goods, just like we're now increasing the sales to Mexico and to Canada because of now. Mr. Harris. I, excuse me, I have 30 seconds left. Okay, go ahead. I want to continue and say that there are great opportunities, and as I said, there are losers. And anything that is labor intensive is being relocated because we're in a global economy that is causing a lot of the labor-intensive product to be produced in places like China, Mexico, and Central America. Now, Mr. Hare. Uh, I, I favor free trade, but at the same time, I also favor fair trade. We need to protect the workers uh, at home. We need to protect them uh, abroad from the slave labor, particularly uh, in China. Uh, Mr. Hanhosa voted to make China the most favored status. Uh, I don't think we should do that as long as while they're persecuting Christians, locking up bishops, locking up priests. Um, I know um, the labor leader uh, said he was going to get Mr. Hinojosa an opponent for voting for the Central American Trade Agreement. I, I guess he had difficulty finding the person. Mr. Zamora. Uh, I would have probably been against CAFTA. I would have been against CAFTA. I'm for free trade, but I'm against anything that has any remote possibility of infringing upon American national sovereignty. Recently, there was a judge outside this country who said that the United States had to allow uh, trucks to enter into our, 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 uh, our borders, our country, that have not passed our safety standards. I don't think any judge outside this country should have any say or jurisdiction on what goes on here. And unfortunately, I didn't hear anybody in Washington uh, taking them to task on that. All right, Mr. Harry, the next question is for you. Talking about the economy and everything, you've now heard Bush has signed a bill to build a border wall going from California all the way down to Brownsville, part of it going from Laredo to Brownsville. What are your, well, I know you've talked about it a little bit tonight. Give us your stance and be specific about what you think about the border wall. I think it's a horrible idea. Uh, I'm, I will work. Uh, they have already approved 700 miles. I will work to see this not funding. Uh, it sends the wrong message to Mexico. Uh, we're friends with Mexico, and we want to remain good friends. We don't uh, put up a, uh, something that they don't want. That's reason enough. Uh, it's not going to stop illegal immigration uh, to begin with. Uh, so I'm totally opposed to it. I think we should be uh, welcoming uh, people who are honest, good, law-abiding citizens who want to work in this country. Uh, we should be grateful that we're there to come. Because of abortion uh, uh, and other reasons, we don't have enough workers. If we want to keep the country prosperous, we have to allow immigration. It's that simple. So I'm for immigration. And I'm opposed to the wall, and I don't understand why Mr. Zamora wants to build a four-foot wall. He says he wants to mark the border. To me, that uh, uh, doesn't make sense at all. Mr. Zamora. Well, there's parts of the border between El Paso and California where there's nothing. You're taking, walking along in the desert, one step you're in one country, the next step you're in another. So you build a four-foot wall, and at least there's something there, a line of demarcation that says this is the border. If you jump over it, you're breaking the law. 
Here in Texas, we got the Rio Grande River that's a natural line of demarcation. You know if you swim across that border, you're breaking the law. I'm for anything and everything to secure our borders, including real walls, real fences, or virtual walls, virtual fences, or a combination thereof, supplemented with uh, cutting-edge electronics, flying drones, sensors, cameras, helicopters, and many more boots on the ground. Mr. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at the legislation that passed just before we broke at the end of September, you will see that the appropriators set up $1.2 billion to build a wall that will take 10 to $12 billion to build. So it tells you that they are using that issue as a way to get the voters to come out and try to keep the majority in the Republicans. It is the most stupid idea that I've ever heard when we build a wall between Mexico and the United States. Okay, now we go to Mr. Zamora. Staying on with the issue of the border wall, as you know, millions and billions of dollars are being proposed to build this wall. How do you think you should propose to build this wall if it is built? Do you think they should cut other programs to build it? Well, if necessary, the, the funding is there. We, I'm, I'm for the sunset law. I know the congressman is opposed to this. We need to re-examine uh, every year uh, programs entitlements, anything that we're spending, your tax dollars, it's our money. So uh, we need to take a look at and see, are they still needful to we the people? Uh, the congressman's aide who showed up for the debate on Friday uh, said that uh, he's against the sunset law because uh, he thinks it gives the Congress, the one Congress, too much power, that they can change 80 or 150 years of laws. Well. The power doesn't belong to the Congress. The power belongs to we the people. And if we the people put enough pressure on our elected representatives and say this is what we want, then this is what we should do. So I'm for the sunset law and that will free up a lot of money to be able to build this wall because we have to secure our borders in this post 9-11 world. You know, it only takes one terrorist to sneak through with a suitcase bomb and he's going to use it against us. So I'm for everything that we can do to secure our borders and we will have no problem funding it. There's no question that we don't have the money because we have a $300 billion deficit, and that's why they cut 11 out of the 13 budgets in the 2007 proposed budget. The only one that did not get cut was military, uh, uh, Department of Defense, and Homeland Security. There's no question. We are spending $6 billion in Iraq per month. And so this is the money to do what my opponent is proposing. Mr. Uh, I'm going to vote against any appropriation to build a wall. So I don't have to worry about where we're going to find the money. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure the money is never spent. Uh, we have people starving to death in the world, and uh, $12 million, billion dollars will go a long way to helping out. So I, I say we're using the money to help the poor. I think I believe in giving preferential options to the poor. I have solidarity with all people throughout the world. All right, next question will be to Mr. Inaposa. You talked about here, you just touched about the national debt. Let's go into that fiscal responsibility. The national debt right now is more than $8.5 trillion, and it's growing at an average rate of $1.6 billion per day. What are your plans to fix it? What impact will your plans have on Social Security or on tax? Under, under a democratic leadership, I believe that there are solutions, and I believe that we are going to work in a bipartisan manner in finding solutions to the most pressing problem, and that is the war on Iraq. So we are spending $8 billion now per month. It is unbelievable at how this administration and the President Bush has been so committed to stay at war and are now even threatening of looking at other countries that are playing around and experimenting with nuclear bombs. I say to you, there needs to be a new path that our country must be on if we are going to be able to go back to the prosperous times of the 1990s, which is the most prosperous period in war and peace times. We need some big changes in Washington, and we hear it in the polls that people are making up their minds to go out and vote early and definitely on November the 7th 
because they are sick and tired of the way that this country is being run by those in the administration. There is fraud. There is all sorts of violations of ethics rules. And what do you think about Mark Foley and what he pulled just two or three weeks ago and what the leadership did to, put, to hide that from the public? Mr. Herring. We need to, as Congressman says, we need to get rid of some congressmen. It's not just Republican incumbents. We need to get rid of a lot of Democratic incumbents, incumbents who vote to fund abortion, incumbents who two twice has failed to support marriages. Two years ago, he voted against the constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage. This year, he didn't show up to the vote, but if he said uh, amendment to define marriage, a union between a man and a woman, he said he got detained somewhere, but if he had been there, he would have voted no. No, he would not stop the same-sex marriages. Mr. Zamora. Congressman, how do you expect to work in a bipartisan way if your party gets in the leadership, if you haven't been working in a bipartisan way there with a Republican in leadership? You voted your party line 97% of the time. Uh, the Republican leadership has cut the debt in half three years early, despite your vote against it. As far as Congressman Foley, I should think you would be for Congressman Foley. As many times as you vote for the homosexuals and against the church, for the homosexuals and against the Boy Scouts of America, requiring the Boy Scouts to reinstate two homosexual troop leaders, pay them 50 grand apiece, plus court costs. All right. Let's move on to now the education. We will begin with Mr. Herring. If elected, what's the first thing you will do to reduce the high school dropout rate here in the Valley? What plans would you propose to encourage more Valley students to seek a college education? I think one of the best things we could do is uh, change the federal law that's mandating the states to have these tests. Uh, I heard one woman speak recently, her third grader failed this test, and he's, he's devastated. It might psychologically hurt him for life. I, I believe that we should leave it up to the local communities to decide what kind of test they want or whether or not to have them at all. And um, I think this would help keep students in school. I favor... Um, uh, increasing Pell Grants for college and vocational schools and to allow them for people of middle class. They need help too. They're not rich. They need help going to school. I, free, I favor freedom of choice and education, the tuition tax credit, tuition vouchers to let people who want to send their children to Catholic and other religious schools or private schools. And Mr. Hinojosa is a, he voted against tuition tax credit. He voted against tuition vouchers for the poor Hispanics and blacks in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's incredible. He will not allow people to have freedom of choice in education, but he wants to give the women the freedom of choice to kill their babies. Mr. Samora. I've talked to a number of teachers on the campaign trail recently, and they all have complained about how many preparatory tax tests they have to take throughout the year. They're stressed out over it. The students are stressed out over it. So I would reduce it down to one achievement test at the end of the year, just like I took. We took one CAT test at the end of the year. Uh, education is very important. Uh, I think the first step in any good education program is to make sure that the child is born first, and then you can educate them. And in that respect, Congressman, you get a big fat F. Mr. Inahosa. I am pleased to say that I was prepared to go to Congress by first serving on the local school board by serving 10 years on the Texas State Board of Education, by serving on the board as the founding chairman of the South Texas Community College. And then I went to Congress and have served on the Education Committee for 10 years. And I say that I have increased the funding in our programs. As an example, the amount that we now have for Head Start, the amount that we have for Gear Up, the amount that we have brought to the community colleges and the universities, that is what I have brought to improve education in my region. All right, thank you. As you know, I told you at the very beginning, you would each get to ask the candidates a question, each one of them. We will begin, since Mr. Herring won the drawing. Mr. Herring, your question for Mr. Zamora first. Um, Mr. Zamora, um, why, why do you think that you should be elected to Congress, uh, being that most people who run for Congress, they, uh, they have experience. They've served on the city level, the county level, the state level. Uh, they've been trained in college, they have the educational experience, and uh, since you uh, have, have no political experience, uh, why, why do you think you should be elected to Congress? Uh, thank you for that question. 
Well, I'll tell you, I think I can most effectively represent we, the people of Texas District 15. The founding fathers of this country did not design a country of the lawyers, by the lawyers, for the lawyers, but of we, the people, for the people, by the people, okay? Now, I've worked as a carpenter, a custodian, a painter, a uh, nuclear reactor operator, a radiation worker, electronics technician, an electrician. I'm a certified welder. I'm an ordained minister. I've worked in business-to-business -business sales, car sales. I think I can relate to most of the people in Texas District 15. Mr. Zamora, it is now your turn. You have to ask a question for Mr. Hinojosa. Uh, Mr. Hinojosa, according to the Washington Post, out of 435 congressmen, you are number 15 in this 109th Congress, number of roll call votes missed. Why are you not able to do your job in Washington? I do my job, and I can tell you that the reasons that I have not been voting on some of those issues is because I'm in my district working and trying to rev up some support for some of the regional projects like the one that will open on November the 2nd in the Mid Valley with the 107 uh, outlets known as the Rio Grande Valley Outlets Mall, and revving up energy and support for an international bridge that will soon start between Dana and Rio Bravo, and revving up support and showing our projects to, to members of the cabinet, like Secretary Gutierrez, showing them the potential that we have in the Delta region so that we can start the Mercado Delta sometime before the end of the year. I've taken the opportunity to show off our Rio Grande Valley, and I believe that many of the votes that were taken in Congress this last year were worthless. Those were prepared by the Republican leadership. Mr. Hinojosa, now you have a chance to ask a question of Mr. Herring. I said ask my challenger. Members of Congress are often called upon to make difficult decisions that affect American lives. What experience in your personal or professional background do you have to prepare you for this task? And how would you go about reaching those life-altering decisions that we members of Congress have to make? Well, um, first of all, uh, I would pray. I would seek divine guidance. Uh, I realize that uh, I need help from God. That would be number one. And um, I have a very good education. I have a degree in history. I have uh, several years of theology and philosophy. I have a law degree from the University of Texas. I have graduate legal studies at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. I was elected and served three terms in the legislature. I have taught school for three and a half years, two years in the public schools and one year in a Catholic school. And I have served uh, as an exempt organization specialist for 23 years with the U.S. government. I've served as an attorney for the Small Business Administration. So I have a vast amount of experience, and I would seek divine assistance on making tough decisions and making many, making many decisions. All right, let's move on to some trivia questions here real quickly. We'll begin, of course, with Mr. Zamora. Who is the current Speaker of the House? Man, you had to ask me that. Uh, gosh, um, I knew it right before you asked me, boss. Dennis Astor. Is Representative Danny Astor? Yes, that is correct. Mr. Hinojosa, who is the U.S. House of Representatives Sergeant of Arms? The sergeant at arms. I do not know his name. Okay, it is Mr. Wilson Bill Livingood. Mr. Herring, how often are members of Congress up for re-election? Every two years. That is correct. Last question I want to ask you, we will begin with Mr. Zamora. Why are you better qualified to represent the Valley in Congress than your opponents? I'm the only man standing up here who served in the United States military, served in the Navy for six years. I have already uh, detailed the variety of jobs that I have worked. I think I can relate to we, the people of Texas District 15, better than my two opponents. And I'm an ordained minister. Now, of the 55 founders 
uh, signers of the Declaration of Independence, 52 were devout members of the church. Many of them were ordained ministers, just like myself. This country was founded upon freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. This country was founded by men and women who came here desiring uh, the freedom to worship God any way they choose. And that is uh, within the fabric of our Constitution and within our culture. So I think uh, I also will approach uh, tough decisions with prayer, being an ordained minister. Zamora, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hinojosa, what would you do for the ballot? Your opponents will not. You have 30 seconds. There's no doubt that over the last 10 years, I've had a learning curve that has allowed me to be a hard worker, efficient, and effective. And I have focused by writing a strategic business plan that I will work on creating jobs, working on education, improving health care, and certainly solving this immigration problem. Mr. Herring, 30 seconds on what you will do for the Valley that you feel your opponents will not. Uh, first of all, I do have military service. I've served three years in the Texas Air National Guard as an Air Operations Specialist, three years in the United States uh, Reserves as an Education Specialist. I stand corrected. Um, I uh, have the experience and, uh, with, uh, as a state legislator, a teacher, a lawyer, but above all, I value and defend and respect human life. That's the fundamental duty of the government to defend human life. And Mr. Hinojosa does not do it. He does not respect human life. He votes 84% of the time to destroy little babies. So he has to be removed. He has disqualified himself from public Herring, office. Thank you very much. We will now move on to your closing statements. Again, you will have two minutes here for your closing statements. We will begin with the person who won the drawing, Mr. Herring. Uh, I'd like very much to ask you to please vote for me. Uh, Mr. Hinojosa has over $500,000. He's collected many hundred, tens of thousands of dollars from banks in New York City. Uh, he has money from oil companies and you, na you name it, he has it. Um, it's important that we defend human life. That's the main issue of this race. Uh, I'd like to read an endorsement uh, from the uh, Bishop Emeritus of Corpus Christi, a Catholic bishop. I believe this might be the first time in the history of the country a Catholic bishop has endorsed a congressional candidate. This is from Bishop uh, Rene Henry Gracida. This is what he says to say, Bishop Gracida. At a time when family values and respect for innocent human life are under attack from many quarters, it is important that the best individuals be elected to Congress who have proven they understand the dangers of these attacks and have demonstrated their ability to defend against them. For that reason, I am happy in my capacity as a private citizen to endorse and support the candidacy of Paul B. Herring for election as Congressman for the 15th Congressional District. Paul B. Herring has a long and distinguished record of public service at the state and national levels of government. I am confident that Paul B. Herring would be an effective Congressman and a credit to South Texas. I urge you to vote to support his candidacy and to vote for him. Rene Henry Gracida, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Corpus Christi. So I hope uh, it's very, it's probably the first time a bishop has endorsed a congressional candidate. And there is a reason, and he told you his reason. So I hope you will put the sanctity of life, not vote to participate in murdering little babies. That's what it boils down to. And vote to protect marriage. That's fundamental for society. We have to stop the same sex marriage. The Supreme Court could make it mandatory throughout the nation unless we pass the constitutional amendment. Thank you very much for your help. Mr. Zamora, you now have two minutes. Thank you very much for having me here again. As an ordained minister, I can tell you the Bible says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I'm very pro-life. As much as Mr. Herring, if not more, I do have the endorsement of the Texas Right to Life Political Action Committee, who actually endorsed two candidates in this race, recognizing the uniqueness of it. I'm very pro-marriage, one man, one woman, pro-family. I'm for lower taxes because we the people know how to spend our own money better than the government. I strongly support the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. I support our troops. I support our veterans, being a six-year Navy veteran myself. You've seen the differences in the votes that have come out. Congressman Hinojosa has voted for abortion, for federal funding of abortion every year since 1998. He's voted for homosexuals and against the church, for homosexuals and against the Boy Scouts of America. 
He recently voted against the Pension Protection Act, against the Horse Protection Act, against requiring proof of U.S. citizenships in order to register to vote. Now, if these votes represent you, please vote for the incumbent. But if you're like most Texans, I think, please vote for Eddie Samora. Pro-life, pro-family, pro-marriage, lower taxes, support our troops and our veterans, and support the Second Amendment. I'm Eddie Samora. Thank you for your vote. Trina Hossa. Tonight, you have heard three candidates discuss why they are running for office. Two of them seem to have single issues that they have been working on throughout this whole campaign. Let me be clear. I have never promoted abortion. I do, however, support the Supreme Court's 1973 court decision in Roe versus Wade, granting women the right to medical privacy. Abortion is a difficult issue that certain political parties have used to tear our nation apart come election time. On this issue, I support the idea of reducing the number of unwanted pregnancies to one, abstinence, two, adoption, three, ed through education, and fourth, through contraception. So to recap, let me close by stating that I'm running for re-election to Congress because I believe in the great work we have done together. And I'm excited about the work we have left to do. When elected, I will work hard to continue forging an even stronger economy to craft better educational opportunities for our children, to fight for real health care solutions for Texas families, for senior citizens and our businesses, as well as to work tirelessly to ensure safety at home and abroad. I give you my solemn pledge that I will continue to work hard for the citizens of the 15th Congressional District and would be honored to fight in Washington for our region's needs with your help and support. So on November the 7th and during early voting, I respectfully ask for your vote, for your support, and a partnership with the goal of making South Texas a safe and prosperous place to live. Thank you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. I know this is hard, being on that side. Of course, we are all like in a fishbowl watching you guys. I think you handled yourselves very well. I hope you enjoyed yourselves out here. Audience, how do you think they did? As you know, early voting has been going on now. Early voting again through November 3rd, November 7th being the election. All the redistricting here and everything still, everyone's still trying to get everything organized with what's going on. I want to thank the people who helped make this very available to you and made it out to the public as well, of course. National Hispanic Professional Organization who helped make this all together. Also, we want to thank UTPA, the Student Union Building, for allowing us to have this here. And of course, Action for News for bringing this all and it will be televised so that everyone can be able to see it on public access television. This was, I think, very insightful. We had a lot of issues. We talked a lot about good points that you all made. I think the candidates deserve a round of applause again, one more time. Thank you again. Valley, this political forum was put on for you. We want you to vote smart during campaign 2006. Of course, for more information on the candidates, you can go to our website at kgbt4.com where you will get all the information, their bios, and even some other political news for you on there. We have their platforms, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and much more. Again, I'm Romeo Cantu for Action for News. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.